Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with another vlog and update video. In this video, I want to show you and talk to you a little bit about the projects that I've been working on lately. Uh, scheduling weekly sewing sessions for my children and their friends. We're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. This little cool box that I got from Mood Fabrics. I have yet to open it, so we'll do that together in this video. And then I'll catch you up on my knitting progress. Thank you all for the suggestions in the last video for beginner-friendly projects. And then I also wanted to do a little bit of a fabric haul just to show you some new fabrics that I picked up recently. So first up, remember the bomber jacket I showed y'all in the last vlog video? I'll link to that below. I finished my daughter's bomber jacket. She loves it. It looks so cute on her. I've yet to finish mine because I'm waiting on some tools to take off like in the zipper. I need to clear some of the zipper teeth because the zipper was too long before I can go ahead and add the collar and finish the top stitching. But as soon as I'm done with that, I will share it with you all. So thank you all for the great feedback. And if you don't follow me on Instagram yet, make sure that you follow me over there. My handle is at Crafty Gemini and I post a ton of pictures insta stories which are little snippets little video clips and behind the scenes type of shots so if you're into that kind of thing then definitely make sure you follow me on instagram i'm also on facebook uh, you can find me at the page under crafty gemini so we finished the bomber jacket then we've been scheduling weekly sewing sessions with my kids where we homeschool our kids for those that don't know and so in the early afternoons on wednesdays we get together with um another one of their friends that's also a homeschool kid and she's 11 years old and every week i feel like now having the scheduled time they literally are cranking out garments one per week and we only sew for about two or two and a half hours we're chatting they're eating snacks you know they're playing and things like that but i find that now that they're a little bit older my kids are nine and seven that having that weekly scheduled chunk of time is really getting them back into the mood of wanting to sew. My kids have been sewing since they were three years old and I did a video for those of you that maybe have kids, nieces and nephews or grandkids that are wanting or maybe showing an interest in sewing. I'll include a link here to a video tutorial that I did when my son was three. He wasn't even three and a half, I think, in that video. And now he's nine. So I make sure that I don't force the kids when I'm teaching them to sew, as well as teaching classes here at my sewing studio. I don't like to force kids. I want it to kind of be child-led, right? I want the kids to say, oh, I have an idea for an emoji pillow. Can you help me make that? That kind of a thing, because I find that when it's too structured and kind of forced, they're gonna lose all interest in it. At least in my experience, that's been the case. And from what I have seen of kids who initially showed some interest in some type of a hobby, and then the parents try to force, 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 and then they don't wanna have nothing to do with it anymore. And I didn't want that to happen with sewing. So, every week we get together for about two and a half hours. These kids have been making their own garments. So I'm gonna put some pictures up here and some video clips so that you all can see the kind of stuff that they're working on. And remember again, these kids are ages seven, nine, and 11. There was a while there where my kids didn't even sew for I think maybe a year. But I was, you know, inside I feel a little nervous because I want them to get back to sewing. But then as soon as they see a project or something that they want to make, they'll say, hey, mama, can we make this? And I'm like, yeah. And I think with Halloween this year, I know in the last vlog video I shared with you all the Halloween costumes that we made together, I think that really triggered them wanting to make more clothes because they saw that they could wear it. And was like, oh, that wasn't too bad. You know, and it wasn't as drawn out as, say, working on a quilt can be. For those of you that are quilters, you know how that goes. So in one afternoon, they can make a top, and my son, oftentimes, when he finishes his shirt, he'll just change out of the one he's wearing and finish wearing the new one he just made for the rest of the day. So I think being able to give them that feeling keeps the enthusiasm going. So the next week, they're looking forward to the next class and seeing, oh, let's have a look through the patterns and see what garment we can make this week. So I've been really, really enjoying those weekly sewing sessions with them, and I've been so, I mean, beyond impressed with the work that these kids have been cranking out. Then I was starting to get a little jealous because they were making so many different garments and I wanted to make some too. So recently, I whipped up a little raglan t-shirt, the same one that my daughter and her friend made, uh, just in my size and oh my goodness, so comfy. And I've been using a cotton spandex blend, so 95% cotton, 5% spandex, and it is just so, so comfortable. I can totally see me making, I mean, dozens of these to just go with jeans. So that's something that I'm looking forward to making more of in the new year also. And excuse my voice, or just getting over a cold. Everybody in my house got sick recently, so I was hoping to have this vlog up last week, and I didn't get a chance to do it. But we're back. We're getting better. Uh, let's go into my knitting. So a lot of you recommended a bunch of different beginner patterns, and I wanted to try something that was smaller and a little bit more 
instant gratification, which I don't know if that's even possible with knitting because this stuff takes forever to do. But I made a washcloth using this pattern that kind of starts down here where you cast on four and then every row you're doing yarn over so you keep building, building, building till there's like a certain number, I think 46 or 48 stitches on your needles and then you start to decrease. So it looks like it's a triangle here or at least the shape of it like that but it starts to then taper off like this. So you end up kind of with a diamond in that shape as it's hanging off the knitting needles. But then of course it's a square washcloth. So I really liked it. I made one for my husband. He loves it. The little bumps really are good. I know people use them for dishcloths, but we're using it as washcloths. So I'm working on this one for my son. And my goal for this washcloth is to have no more than five mistakes per washcloth. I have one mistake in here. But so far I'm almost halfway there and no other mistakes. So I think I'll be able to do it. And I find that that's something that I do for myself instead of just telling myself it needs to be perfect, you know, on the second try, I set myself a little bit more manageable goal that allows me some flexibility. So less than five mistakes. The other one had way more than five mistakes, um, but it's still a usable washcloth. So if you're someone who's been trying either crochet or knitting or something, Maybe try that and see if that mentally helps you and works for you to tell yourself, you know, let me aim for less than 10 mistakes or less than five mistakes. And you, I find at least for me that if I aim for less than five, I'll probably just end up with maybe two mistakes because I'm aiming for something that's not as rigid as saying it needs to be perfect, which me 10 years ago would totally have been like that because I am a perfectionist at heart. But this again allows me some flexibility and I'm super excited with how it's looking. I started it late last night while I was editing some other videos and it's good, good progress. So I'm excited for this one. So thank you all for your suggestions and I'll keep you all up to date on what other crazy little projects I start to work on. Now let's move on to unboxing this little box that I got from Mood. This is from Mood Fabrics in New York City. Every time I go to New York, I buy at least something there. And I was there last month. I picked up some stretch denim a black and white Ponte stretch knit. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw the live uh, video that I did from Mood. So uh, again, another reason to follow me on Instagram because I do a lot of that kind of stuff when I'm on the go traveling somewhere or visiting a shop. So this is um, something like a swatch club that they do that you can sign up for and get access to little chunks, little swatches of fabric, of fabrics that you can actually touch and feel and see if you want to go ahead and order it. So let me grab some scissors so we can open this up together. All right, so when we open this up, it says, oh, hello, darling, what did you make? So I guess this is a hashtag they'd like us to use when we use fabric from Mood, so that's good to know because I didn't know that, and I follow them on Instagram and everything. Free Mood cosplay pattern. So there's 10 cosplays inside plus 80, pl uh, 80 plus more free patterns online. So if you like cosplay, check this out. Next, let's see, Swatch Club, so exclusively Mood. So it's a little booklet that accompanies this, which I find that recently more uh, subscription boxes are starting to do this, where they give you a booklet, maybe some free patterns, some information on whoever curated the box, and things like that is just added info. So the swatches, there's a feature report, there's some free patterns, and then there's members only perk page for members of the Swatch Club, okay? Wow, there's a ton of info in here. All right, so see, there's also some articles. So it's like a little mini magazine. What's velvet, the different types of velvet, which is hot right now. I've been seeing stretch velvets everywhere still, again. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm talking about striped cotton denim. And it's cool because they're talking about the fabrics. They're a fabric store, but also they're showing you things that can be made in it, different colors that it comes with. Alright, so let's get to these swatches. There's 25 of them, so I'm just going to briefly show them. And this is a cotton wall. You can see how drapey and airy it is in this funky floral. This is a polyester shantung. I'm not a fan of that stuff. I live in Florida. It's way too hot for that. This is a silver on black fleece. It's backed reflective fabric. So this side is the reflective part and it's super soft fleece on the other. And it is $50 a yard. Yikes. Alright. This one is 
a blue gingham plaid. It's cotton. It feels a little bit flannelly. This is cute. A cotton sateen. It's a nice light one, though. A green tinsel and wool twill. Wow, but this is so soft and drapey. I like that. This is another cotton voile. Pretty sheer, too, because, uh, because of the white background. But that's cute. This is, fuzz is sticking to this stuff. I want to see where the fuzz is coming from. Uh, it's a polyester velvet in vanilla. This is a navy velvet and shearling fleece. So it's velvet on the pretty side, I guess, what would be exposed, and this on the inside. This will make a nice outerwear cardigan or like a lightweight jacket. Wow, it has good weight to it. This is a jacquard. And the jacquards are cool because when they're pretty on the back side, you can choose to use either side for your projects, you know? This is a crinkled velour. I like that. That's what they showed in the book when I showed you all that dress. This is really pretty. $16 a yard. Not bad. What the? Two-tone indigo and black linen woven. This is really nice. I was going to say like a chambray. Feels really good. And I like that it's blue and black. You probably can't see it that well on camera, but you can see both colors on there. Cotton sateen, another two-tone linen woven. So on this one, where you could hardly see the blue and the black, you can see it better on this, the two-tone. So that's how the blue and black one looks. This is a stretch cotton sateen. There's a good amount of stretch there, not bad. What's this? A boiled wool. Wow, that feels good. Again, for outerwear. This is a strawberry pink color. Another stretch cotton sateen cashmere coating Italian in fuchsia that's pretty this must be where this stuff is coming from Oof. this is a vibrant multicolored faux fur maybe not I think it's coming from the other faux fur that's down there a cotton denim, not stretch. I like this. It says it's heathered gray single-sided wind armor performance fleece. The fleecy side is super soft. It's a nice color too. And this is striped stretch Eklon jersey. And actually, I have a fabric like this and I've been looking for more because I love the stretch that it has. This is like the same stuff I used uh, for the bands on my daughter's bomber jacket and mine too. And I don't have enough of it. I might have to go online and see what other colors they have this in. $16 a yard. Look at the stretch on that. Great for ribbing on those bomber jackets. Yeah, I really like this one. Another, uh, this is cotton poplin. Nice crisp hands, still lightweight. And this is a wicking jersey. Oh, that has a good stretch to it. I'm the one making all the mess. Well, it was both of the faux furs, because I see both colors, but this is a green and gray color blocked faux fur. So you see how it's blocked on the back? And that's what it looks like on the front. All right, so shout out to Mood for sending me this. Thank you. Otherwise, I would not have known that they had this or that it was called this Eklon jersey. I have no idea what that means, but I shall look it up because I want to see this in a few different colors. So I will leave that one on top. And now let's jump into my little fabric haul so I can show you what I recently got. Now for the fabrics. I recently went to Joanne's with my husband and had him pick out a couple of fabrics that he would like for me to use to make him some just basic long sleeve tees that he can layer underneath a sweater or a hoodie when he goes out in the morning to do farm chores and stuff. And so he picked a couple of these. They're kind of, they were in the active wear, the performance section. Look how cool, that color on one side and more of like the purplish version on the other. And it was just, in the performance thing, it was like a, a polyester fabric that was one of those like uh, wicking fabrics or dry fit kind of stuff. 
So I got that one. It's nice and lightweight, so I think that will work good. Just basic long sleeve tee with like a crew neck style. That'll be fine for him. And then I found this one and he agreed that he liked it. It was a lightweight wool jersey. It has wool and rayon in it and it was just, the drape is nice. It has kind of a heathered look to it just a little bit, but it feels so lightweight and breathable. Um, wool, rayon, and then some spandex. So I thought, oh my gosh, I have to get some of this. So I will be working on some long sleeve tees for him out of those. Then I have this polyester knit that are like these circles. I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it yet. If you have a suggestion or you think you know what you would make if you had this fabric, let me know in the comments below. I'm not too sure this is the right side of it. It's kind of, it's just a polyester knit. There's not that much stretch. Maybe 25, 25%, 20 or 30, somewhere between there. And in the other direction, lengthwise, it doesn't have much stretch at all. Uh, I was thinking like a lightweight long sleeve sweater just to wear like a t-shirt or a tank top underneath. It doesn't get that cold here where I live in Florida, but I love the geometric shape and print of this. So we'll see what we end up with. Aside from that, I have been stocking up on the cotton spandex or CL as you'll see it written in a lot of online places and groups just referencing the cotton, the C and then the L for Lycra cotton and spandex. Lycra is the trademark name. Spandex is the generic name for what gives our fabric that stretch and that bounce back, that stretch return that we often want when we're making uh, t-shirts and other stretch knit garments. So this is the fabric that my kids have been using to make their t-shirts. They've made shorts. I mean, it just is amazing. It's 95% cotton and 5% uh, spandex. And so we've been getting it in a ton of different colors. You can see the gray here. That's what I use with the navy to make my raglan tee. Um, at home, I think we just got the shipment in for like orange, fuchsia, coral, <laughs> black, and all these. Well, I have black here. What else? Red. I got this burgundy color too. The thing with the cotton lycra prints, is the, or solids, I should say, the cotton spandex ones, is that you don't really know the weight of it unless the seller tells you how many ounces it is for you to kind of gauge if it's more of a lightweight cotton spandex or a heavier weight. This one has such a good weight to it. So does my gray, the navy, the white, the black. This blue one has a really good weight, but it's just not as thick as this burgundy one. And you can probably see that. I mean, look how heavy it is. So you see the stretch, oh my goodness, it feels so, so good. It just has a good body, it doesn't feel like cheap t-shirt fabric. And so I'm debating whether or not I should start adding these. Um, I found a source for them uh, to order as a business, and so I'm thinking of adding some of these cotton spandex prints to my website. They're great for anything, t-shirts, shorts, pajama pants, pajama shirts, long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts. I use it for everything now, including uh, underwear. So if you're looking for cotton and stretch, that's a good blend to look for, is 95% cotton, 5% spandex. So if you want to see me add that to the website, let me know in the comments below also. The black is amazing, and it's also great for neck bands, sleeve bands, and things like that. So say you've tried my Westchester Dolman top, free PDF pattern, which is what I'm wearing here. I added the neck band part, to it out of the same print of the fabric. But say I wanted to have it contrasting in black, I could totally use this cotton spandex to make a bold black neckline on something, on a t-shirt or whatever it is that you're making. So think about it for that as well. And I love to keep all the scraps on hand because if you get into making underwear, you'll need some small pieces for gussets. And if you're making shorts for kids, every little scrap, you can totally use it to even line bras, line different underwear. You can use it for a ton of different stuff and you can never have too much of the cotton spandex, at least I think, if you sew clothes. I know a lot of you are really hesitant to sew uh, stretch garments, but a good place to start would be my free PDF pattern that's called the Westchester Dolman Top. And it's just a simple t-shirt pattern, this one, three quarter sleeves. I didn't add the sleeve bands to it, but if you do a quick search for it here on YouTube, just type in Westchester Dolman Top. Uh, you'll find it. It's a free PDF download for the pattern and it comes in women's sizes small through 3XL. So that would be a good place to start and then you'll get a better feel for sewing with stretch knits, how to cut and sew on the neckband, and I have a seven part video series showing you how to put it all together step by step for free on my YouTube channel. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit it with that thumbs up, share it with your friends across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching. Head over to my website so you can subscribe to the email newsletter list, and I will see you in the next video.